You're right, this side does look better. No, no, I didn't say better, I said less stained. <laughs> I just checked the house. There's probably 20, 25 people in there. You're kidding. Is that all? All? In particle physics, 25 is Woodstock. <laughs> oh, well, then good. I wasn't expecting such a crowd. I'm a little nervous. It's okay, just open with a joke, you'll be fine. Okay, uh, joke. Okay. How about this? Um, okay. Uh, there's this farmer, and he has these chickens, but they won't lay any eggs. So, he calls a physicist to help. The physicist then does some calculations, and he says, um, I have a solution, but uh, it, it only works with spherical chickens in a vacuum. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry, I've just, I've heard it before. Well, let's roll. Okay. Hey, nice suit. It's a classic, right? I really should have brought my own car. So, in conclusion, the data show that at temperatures approaching absolute zero, the moment of inertia changes, and the solid becomes a super solid, which clearly appears to be a previously unknown state of matter. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, what the hell was that? <laughs> any other questions? Dr. Sheldon Cooper here. I am the lead author of this particular paper. Thank you. <laughs> and you, sir, you have completely skipped over the part where I was walking through the park and I saw these children on a merry-go-round, which started me thinking about the moment of inertia in gases like helium at temperatures approaching absolute zero. I didn't skip it. It's just an anecdote. It's not science. Oh, oh, I see. It was the apple falling on Newton's head. Was that just an anecdote? You are not Isaac Newton. No, no, that's true. Gravity would have been apparent to me without the apple. Oh, you cannot possibly be that arrogant. You continue to underestimate me, my good man. <laughs> Look, if you weren't happy with my presentation, then maybe you should have given it with me. As I've explained repeatedly, unlike you, I don't need validation from lesser minds. No offense. Really? So why did you come? Because I knew you'd screw this up. I didn't screw it up. Oh, please. I admit that spherical chicken joke, that was hilarious. Thanks. But it was straight downhill from there. You know what? I've had enough of your condescension. Maybe I didn't go to college when I was 11, like you. Maybe I got my doctorate at 24 instead of 16. But you are not the only person who is smarter than everyone else in this room. No offense. <laughs> and, and I am clearly not the only person who is tormented by insecurity and has an ego in need of constant validation. So you admit you're an egotist? Yes! My name is Dr. Leonard Hofstetter, and I could never please my parents, so I need to get all my self-esteem from strangers like you. But he's worse! <laughs> okay, that is it. Stop it. <laughs> you cannot blow up my head with your mind. Then I'll settle for an aneurysm. Stop it. You hit me. You saw that, he hit me. I'm trying to blow up my head. So it was working. It wasn't, it was not. What, you are a nutcase. Oh, we'll see about that. Stop. Heads up, you people in the front row, this is a splash zone. Stop. Stop it! Quit it! Is this usually how these physics things go? More often than you think. 